Welcome to another round WRFL FDFL Legends. I'm Kevin Hilly with me, Steve Tom. And the legend we've got with us today, Tomsey, is a beauty from the Spotswood Football Club. 50 years at the same club uh, as, a, as a player, uh, as a premiership player, I should point out, uh, then uh, into the administration part of it, uh, as a son, as a dad, as a granddad. There's generations of Murphys running through the, uh, uh, the Spotswood Football Club. Welcome, Spots. Terrific to have you as part of this. Thanks, Kev. 50 years at the same club. Yes. That's remarkable. You yeah. walked in, what, as a 13-year-old? I did walk in as a 13-year-old. Uh, that was back in uh, 61 and battled to get a game for the first couple of years. And, you know, I was fortunate enough to uh, get a game in the under-16s and then under-18s and, and into the seniors after that. And what a remarkable journey. I mean, did you ever think 50 years later you'd be sitting here talking about well, no, what you've been doing? Not. Certainly not, no. It's absolutely no. remarkable. You've had a, uh, quite a fair bit of success in that time too, six or seven premierships in that time? Uh, do you, no, I've had more than that. More than that, but Twelve. let's not count the juniors, yeah, yeah just at senior level. Oh, my premierships? Yes, your premierships. Oh, yeah, yeah, seven. Yeah, sorry, I played yeah, just in as seven. a player, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. one of the uh, rituals that uh, we've been advised that you may have had was always have those couple of beers before a game. I'm not saying that happened all the time, Murph. How did that start, Every Murph? now and then. Oh. Or is that exaggerated? I didn't think you'd bring this up. <laughs> oh, you're kidding, aren't you? We're just going to show how good football was back We're then. We're trying to come to an excuse for why we've had 14 before we're doing this show. <laughs> now, what, what had happened was um, I was getting lift one day to the football. And uh, so I went to the spotty pub because I knew guys were leaving the uh, spotty pub. Yeah. And I walked in and had a lemon squash. And one of our life members came up and he said, what are you having a lemon squash for? I said, oh, I'll just have a drink. He said, well, you might as well have a beer. It's, it's still <laughs> liquid in your body. So the next week I went up there and I had a beer. And I played reasonable, so I thought, well, that might be the, um, the answer. <laughs> What's your fondest memory as a, as a player, first up? As a player, uh, probably uh, playing in uh, winning premierships. Yeah. Um, and uh, the mateship that I've had out of uh, all the guys that I've played uh, with over the years. I've got some um, mates going back to when I was playing under 16, so, yeah, long time mates. And the, the family connection, I mean, you, your dad was involved at the club and obviously you got involved and then you've got your sons involved and now your sons' sons are involved in it? Yeah, well, it actually goes back further than that. Uh, my grandfather was um, a sponsor of the club. He oh, had right. the fruit shop in Spotswood. Yep. He used to donate the uh, oranges uh, to the club. Then my uncle took over the, the fruit shop. He did the same. And Dad played, I played, um, five grandchildren uh, played, Chris's four boys and my daughter's boy is now playing. And um, of course, Jane and the team. I was going to say, Jane's been an yeah. enormous part of that football club. You know, Jane's, Jane's been there about, um, working I suppose for about 32, 33 years. Goodness me. Yeah. Very good. The, uh, saying all that, the passion around a football club, you know, mainly speaking about yourself, you have to have that word passion. It, it seems to have gone out of a lot of uh, players, supporters, uh, people around clubs these days. To give 50 years is unbelievable, but a lot of them don't even survive five anymore. You know, it really has dropped off. That must be disappointing when you see that, not just from Spotswood Football Club, but other clubs around the competition. Yeah, well, as a matter of fact, we're just talking about um, the number of players that have uh, played in the, the premierships over this last uh, six years. There's only... Um, Wilbur Langlands that played in four of them. Mm. And we have uh, such a turnover of players, we might lose six players, we might lose eight players, we might lose 10 players. So yeah. each year that we've won a premiership, we've ended up losing players, but we've ended up uh, getting good players back to uh, replace them. So it is disappointing when you see the players play in a premiership and after a few years they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. We spoke to Terry McGarrity, uh, obviously in the segment uh, just prior to this, and he, he mentioned uh, back in the, the year he won the premiership when he was coaching, um, that he wouldn't have done it without yourself. He wrapped you up just saying, apart from the, the talent that Spotswood had, they probably lacked just a, a little bit of physical um, awareness of doing the right thing. And uh, he mentioned your name as being uh, one of the, the stronger men of the team. Oh, well, that's good of him to say something like that. <laughs> yeah, actually, he said I'm it in a different way, but you know what I mean. Yeah, he said one yeah, day. Send your wax a few blokes. Uh, six uh, months like opposition really. laid, yeah. yeah. Uh, sometimes it had to be done, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of modern football? Very good. Yeah, Very enjoy. good. I, I think the skill level is uh, fantastic. Um, the speed of the game is incredible. And uh, the guys put in a training 
you know, I think back to the time when I was playing, you know, we, we didn't put anywhere near the amount of time in that uh, these guys are doing. And, you know, it, I noticed on a Thursday night the, the boys um, just sit down, they'll have a Coke or a Powerade. Mm. You know, it was a bit different to... What's, what was the time. ritual in your day? I don't mean the pre-match one, but the, would you have a couple of beers on the Thursday night? Oh, yeah. And, and, then, and the Friday. And the, fr and the Friday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And what about what about match days after after the game? It'd be a fairly reasonable sort of time. To be yeah, there we, well, you wouldn't you wouldn't leave the club. Yep. You'd stay at the club. You got the, you you get there uh, for the game. Uh, there'd always be some sort of function on, and it'd probably be twelve, one o'clock, two o'clock when you leave there. The um, the interaction between clubs now too that that's diminished a lot. It still goes on. It's a, a, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but they'll go in for half an hour. Whereas I'm sure in your day it would have been a lot different than that. Oh, it was, yeah. And um, it is a shame because uh, we, we've noticed every every club that um, that we go to, we make it a point that our players go in. Yep. And I certainly make it a point of going in um, uh, uh, to each of the uh, away teams because we expect the other teams to, to do the same thing. Yeah. But um, nearly every every other club is the uh, same as us. Half past six, seven o'clock, you can back it in. You know, this, uh, the players will wander off. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a pity, shame. isn't it? And, yeah, it's, it, it, and that it's camaraderie shame. with the umpires and stuff has also sort of diminished it, it a bit does, as well. Yes. Yeah. Another thing I would say, Murph, it must be proud. Um, pretty always have a very strong supporter base at Spotswood Football Club. But for yourself, I mean, we mentioned the huge family involvement that your family have had, but uh, the bonds, and we'll just keep riddling through the names. A lot of you all stand together come the Saturday afternoon to know that grandchildren are playing now or sons are playing involved. It must be a thrill for all of you to say, well, you know, we've. You know, we've been part of this for 50 years, 40 years, all of us together. Oh, it is. Um, and, and we sort of rely on a lot of our ex-players bringing their boys yeah. uh, back to the club. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because we're only a small area. And it is fantastic to see that, you know, the kids run out that you've played with, uh, mm. with their parents and that. It's, yeah. It is great. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a unique family uh, environment that Spotswood's got that I don't think a lot of other clubs in the competition have got. No. You seem to have you seem to have nailed that really really well, and I'm sure that comes from your influence. Yeah. How would it go these days if all of a sudden a couple of the players decided they'll call in the spots uh, Spotties Wood Hotel on the way before a game and have a couple of pots? Would that be frowned upon oh, by yourself and Bondies and these type of games? Wouldn't have happened in my day. Oh well, yeah, it did. <laughs> I'd be in there straight away. <laughs> <laughs> I hand out their pays. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough too. Um, Spud, you're a legend of the uh, of the competition. Uh, Fifty years, and uh, may there be fifty more because you've just been fantastic yeah. for the Spotswood Footy Club and for the and for the competition. Thank you very much. Pleasure Kate. to have you on. Uh, our legends of the West here on the WRFL website.